Hi, everyone. It's Peter Schiff. It's Wednesday, March 13th, 2013. Well, gold and silver prices have been falling pretty much for the past four or five months. And I think that the correction represents a great buying opportunity uh, for savers, for investors, uh, because, first of all, the, the correction is based on the false premise that the economy is improving and the stock market is making new highs. Therefore, there's no reason to buy gold anymore. After all, gold was a safe haven. We were buying gold because we were worried about the markets. We were worried about the economy. And now there's nothing to worry about. Everything is great. And so gold prices are going to collapse. Now, that's a nice story, but it isn't true. In fact, the truth is that our problems are largely in front of us, not behind us. The only reason that the economy appears to be recovering and the stock market appears to be rising is because the government is debasing the money. The Federal Reserve is printing money, call it quantitative easing, whatever you want, but it's old-fashioned debt monetization, money printing, and that's what's going on. We haven't solved our problems. We're papering them over temporarily. And all this cheap money is going into the stock market, but ultimately it's going to go right back into gold and silver. Everything the government is doing to artificially stimulate the economy and prop up the stock market, all of that is fuel uh, to the fire uh, beneath uh, gold and silver. I mean, inflation is going to be much stronger or much better when it comes to uh, rising prices for gold and silver than it is for the stock market. So I think investors who are jumping to the wrong conclusion are doing the wrong thing with respect to their gold and silver, but that represents a great opportunity for those of us that really understand the big picture. And remember, the same people on Wall Street who are telling us to sell gold and silver because the coast is clear, these are the same people that never saw the problem coming in the first place. What's going on right now in the U.S. economy is really no different than what went on in 2003, 4, and 5. Uh, the experts on Wall Street thought the economy was recovering then. It wasn't. The Federal Reserve made sure of that. All we did was replace a, real, a stock market bubble with a real estate bubble. But in the process, instead of solving the problems in the economy that were created during the dot-com bubble, we, we, we simply replaced them with bigger problems in the housing bubble. And when that bubble burst, again, more of the same, and now it looks as if we're recovering, but appearances can be very deceptive, especially to people who don't understand the fundamentals. And when they don't understand the fundamentals, they make mistakes. And one of the mistakes that people have been making is selling gold and silver. And you can really see this sentiment when it comes to the mining stocks, which have really been thrown out the window. Uh, mining stocks have fallen much more dramatically than gold and silver bullion. And what that indicates to me is extreme negative sentiment on the part of the investment community about the future price of gold. Not simply where it is now, but that investors are anticipating a major decline in the price of gold and silver. I don't believe that major decline is coming. In fact, I think the lion's share of the gains are still ahead of us. I think pretty soon more people will understand that there is no exit strategy, that the Fed can't exit, that it's just going to keep on printing, pretending that there's an exit strategy at some far off point on a horizon that we never seem to reach, you know, rather than creating an economy that can sustain itself without Fed stimulus, the Fed has succeeded in creating an economy that is completely dependent on that stimulus. And in fact, over the last several weeks, more evidence has come out from the Fed that they're not going to be withdrawing the stimulus. Ben Bernanke has backed away from his claim that the Fed is going to start shrinking the balance sheet by selling treasuries. Ben Bernanke now claims he doesn't have to sell the treasuries, that he has the luxury of holding the treasuries until they mature. But as they back away from this talk about somehow removing the punch bowl from the party, this has been good news for the precious metals market, but it's largely been ignored. The stock market has embraced it, but the precious metals traders have not. But I think once we overcome the, 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 the short-term selling, I think the long-term economic fundamentals, and uh, particularly when it comes to gold and silver, will emerge, and I think we will exhaust the selling, and we will have 
a, a run to new highs based on investor buying, based on central bank buying, based on savers around the world coming to terms with the fact that they cannot store uh, a fiat currency. You have central banks around the world now embracing inflation. They are not going to be seen as inflation fighters, but as inflation creators. As central banks try to convince us that inflation is good for us, more and more people aren't going to buy it. And they're going to want to opt out of these fiat systems by storing their purchasing power in real money. That's gold and silver. And, you know, it's it, the most important when it comes to, you know, savings or storing your purchasing power is when you're talking about uh, money that you're not going to use for a long time, such as money that you're setting away for your retirement. That might be 10 or 20 years or more into the future. And it's very important when you're planning on, on, on the future that the money you're setting aside retain its purchasing power. The government might be trying to convince us that there's no inflation, but we know better. And a lot of people who are saving for the future are doing so through uh, government uh, tax-deferred retirement accounts, such as uh, IRAs. A lot of people don't realize that you can own physical gold and silver in an IRA. In fact, it's an ideal place to store your gold and silver. In many cases, the storage fees that you pay or the custody fees that you pay to the custodian, you end up getting a better deal than what you would otherwise pay if you wanted to have your precious metals stored by a third party. So it's a good, it's a, it's, it's good thing from a cost perspective, but if you have a lot of money in your IRA and you're not planning on touching that money for 10, 20 years into the future, you really want to protect the purchasing power and what better way to protect it than by having real money, gold or silver, as part of that IRA, especially now that we've had this correction in both the price of gold and silver, I think it's an even better time for people who haven't taken advantage of the ability uh, to move physical precious metals into an IRA to do that. And if you, if you want to get more information about that, of course, talk to your representative at Euro-Pacific Precious Metals. That's all for now. This has been Peter Schiff. Take care.